Troop management in Hearts of Iron 4 is not the most straightforward thing. If you're like me, you've played this game and been frustrated. Why do they keep moving? Stop moving. Stay. My troops do not listen to my orders at all. Can you stop moving in weird directions? So I've, uh, I've sat down and done some research. I will explain my findings by using the German Civil War as an example. I have a bunch of divisions on the map. This is all of my unassigned divisions. They don't have any generals. They're just, they're just on their own figuring things out. So you can click on this button here, create a new army. Now all of my troops are in an army. And I'll pick this guy. He has a good attack stat. Once you assign a commander, you have a, a limit. You can have unlimited things not assigned to a commander, but this guy can only command so many people. Uh, so he, he's over the capacity and it makes a big penalty. He has 24 that he can have. And conveniently, these troops that spawn uh, due to the war, there happens to be 24 of those divisions. We're removing 14 divisions that we already had at the start of the game. There's this order you can do frontline. You know, you can just click, boom, frontline. And then you're like, well, this guy doesn't have orders, frontline. The issue is that this gets messy when you have a larger war, say between Germany and the Soviet Union, and you have 10 armies, maybe. Let's just say that things get messy so click on your armies and then this button here boom now your armies are in a single group and then if we assign a field marshal you can have five armies per field marshal and then if you click the front line now you have one single front line however it breaks up weird between the armies it's trying to put like some armies where the armies stay consistent i don't really like this method of front line it's kind of weird so instead i like to instead of just clicking i like uh, shift clicking and that will give me a front line across the entire border. That's one continuous thing. And all of these troops are going to act along this front line as if they are a single general. So, you know, this tank can move to anywhere on this front line wherever it's needed. Say I did back to what we normally had, like this. For example, I'm not going to do the full length of this army. Maybe I just want the purple army in the north the blue army in the south. And that's because I have my elite troops in the north and I have my weak my weak infantry in the south. I grab one of these tanks and I'm like, I want, I want a tank down here in the south with my weak infantry uh, just to help push through. You assign the tank to this order. Now this guy's over his capacity because he can't have orders from other armies. You could do the same thing with a field marshal. I have a northern army and a southern army. And if I select all of these units, assign them to the south, if I grab this unit from up here, assign them down here, that way you can easily change an army's order without changing its general. All right, so that's how you get your units on the border, but how do you make them actually attack? So you click this button, and that creates an offensive line. They will push from the border to your offensive line, attacking anything in between. So you could just, like, line up across the entire nation and just tell your units to basically just push until there's nothing left to your enemy. The problem with this, your units will push and push and push, and then they'll reach here. So now I've done it. I've cut the line in half. On this front, the, the, all like this tank could win and start attacking, but none of these units are doing anything. That's because this order is split in half, and they get all confused with this. Instead of dealing with that, let's instead make two offensive lines. I know that this pocket will get cut in half. Do another front line to here. So my units won't get confused when this line breaks and they'll both continue to push without me having to micromanage it. But there's no units assigned to this. They're all assigned to this first order because I had them all selected. So instead, I'm going to grab most of the people in the north and control click the northern offensive line. That way I have two separate offensive lines coming off one order. All right, there we go. We've cut them in half and now these units... You can see they're still making attacks. They're still moving around. They're not confused. They still know what to do. And this front is also knowing what to do. Right here in this army, I have these units that are fresh green. They get a negative 25 modifier in combat versus these units that are trained that get a plus 25 modifier in combat. And this north is where Berlin is. So say I want to push really hard north. So I select all of these units and I make a front line. That way my better units are used more effectively these weak, just basic infantry that are untrained. I want them to hold the south. Uh, I want the, the north to attack in the north. And I'm like, I'm trying to make a front line. I want the north to attack and the, no, I want like, and you're confused as to why, why are my south units? I want my northern units to attack. It keeps drawing from 
this bottom line, not from the top line. It's very frustrating when that happens. What you can do is if you select your field marshal, it's important that you select your field marshal first, then you do control, right click, you only select the units assigned to the order, and then you make the front line. It will only come from the units. It'll decide, oh, you're selecting that order's units. That way you can actually dictate where the offensive line, which order the offensive line is coming from. Sometimes I recommend you don't give your units orders, specifically when you have cases of like tanks. If you only have like two tank divisions, it can be very, very useful to take your two tanks and micromanage them specifically because your tanks are your, your main pushing force that can break through enemy lines, whereas your infantry maybe not as good for attacking. If I were to have a fallback line right here along this river, because that's a defensible spot, the AI tries to make sure that your forces are evenly spread out across the fallback line. If you're ordering a mass retreat to a defensive position, might decide, oh, this part of the fallback line is weak, I'm gonna go across this way, and then gets caught and encircled and destroyed. So in a case like this, probably best to just give the units orders directly yourself. Say I want to take this city here. If I click on the city, tell this guy to move into it, he's going to start attacking, and uh, this guy probably won't win on his own. You get bonuses from attacking in multiple directions onto a single tile. So we could add in these guys to the combat as well. The problem is, if I have them all attack like this, we'll probably win. All of these units are going to be sitting on this tile. And now this tile and this tile, these two, where these, units, where these two side units used to be, will be completely undefended, allowing these guys to just walk in and take that territory. So instead, let this guy engage in combat. Instead of moving them into this tile, control right click the bubble, and they will, you can see by the sword icon, they're going to attack, but they're not going to move. But when this combat ends and this guy wins, he'll move in and these two will stay in place. And that way your defensive line is not disrupted, but they are still being able to help out. My supply is coming from my capital going up here and then to this naval base, and then it's shipping with via boats across water to my little territory over here because there's no land connection, no railroads that connect these two places. The problem is, is that enemies can do the same. So if someone land navally invades your shores and grabs a naval base, those troops now actually can get supply and this guy right here can only move between naval bases. He can't move to this tile over here. He has to move between ports. So when it comes to ports, if an enemy grabs your port, they not only get supply in that region, they also can flood in new units that weren't a part of the naval invasion order. If they were to land on this coast tile right here or right here, they're going to starve and have no way to get reinforcements. And then you can kill them very easily. If they get a port, it's going to be a lot harder to push them back. So it's very important to make sure your ports are guarded. Now, one way you could do that, do a area defense order and then just select naval bases and then select all of your coastal territory. The problem is, is that I find if you're at peace, uh, area defense is good for spreading out your units so that your supply doesn't get overloaded. But when you're at war, you, you don't want your units moving around unpredictably. I recommend doing fallback lines, just a single tile fallback line. So just draw a little fallback line on your naval ports. Right. Make sure you get all of them. It's a bit tedious compared to area defense, but this way your units will actually defend your port a lot more successfully and you have a lot more control over who goes to which port and how many on, are in each port. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.